Good morning, Mr. Fox. I'm here to um, do a dressing change today. And first, I'm just going to check your patient ID. And I do see, in fact, that you are Mr. Alan Fox. Um, so first, I'm going to start by just removing your old dressing and having a look at your incision, if that's all right with you. Perfect. So now I'm just going to raise the height of the bed a little bit, just so it's more comfortable for me, at a more comfortable work level. I think that's great. And before I start, I'm just going to sanitize my hands. And I'm going to apply some clean gloves. All right, so if you don't mind, I'm just going to lower your gown up here slightly so I can have a look at the, ins at the dressing. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the dressing, Mr. Fox. And I'm also going to be assessing the site here. So I can see that there's a moderate amount of uh, serosanguinous discharge that's coming out, so I'm going to um, be sure to record that um, in your chart. I'm going to dispose of that. And I'm going to look at the incision itself. And when I'm assessing the incision, um, using the tool Rita is very useful. Um, and this is a tool that can be applied to any incision anywhere on the body. So what I'm assessing for, um, so Rita is R-E-E-D-A. And so R stands for redness. The first E stands for edema, then ecchymosis, discharge, and then approximation. So in this, this is a fresh incision, so I can see that there's a little bit of redness um, around the incision area. I don't see any edema or ecchymosis present. Um, there was some discharge that I did mention and it seems like the wound edges are well approximated. So everything seems to be looking good, Mr. Mr. Fox. I'm just going to now get my supplies ready and we'll go ahead and, and redress that for you. So today we're gonna to be setting up a sterile field and I'm gonna be going through that with you. Um, so just wanna let you know that um, gathered the equipment and I'll be re reviewing the equipment that I've gathered. But before I do that, um, I have gone ahead and I have Viroxed my uh, table so my environment is nice and clean. And um, now I will go over the equipment that I have gathered. Um, in this case, so I'm going to be doing a simple dressing change. So I've gathered a dressing tray. Um, so if you're not sure what equipment that you need in terms of the, dr or the dressing that you're completing because there are various trays that are available. Um, the supplies are listed on the dressing tray itself, so feel free to read that and then see if there's anything else that you might need to add to your tray. Um, the other thing when grabbing a dressing tray is to make sure that the tray is intact and also checking the expiry date to make sure that you're still able to use it. Um, the other thing, so I have mentioned that I needed to add a few supplies, so I'm going to add a 2x2 two two and a 4x4, four four, so I've gathered those supplies as well. Um, this particular dressing tray does not come with a pair of sterile gloves, so I have grabbed a pair of sterile gloves that I will need to, to don afterwards. Um, I have grabbed um, some solution um, that I will need in order to clean the wound. And I've noticed that this solution has been opened before, but it has been dated and timed. Um, so it's still within the 24 hours, so I'm okay to go ahead and use it. Um, I'm also going to check the expiry date. Um, just to make sure that the solution itself is still, I am still able to use it. And I'm also going to look at um, the solution to make sure that it's clear, that there are no sediments, that it's not cloudy or um, looks funny. Um, and then I'm going to ha have some tape, so I have my tape here. Uh, so before I start opening up, I'm going to sanitize my hands. Okay, so I'm going to start by opening up my dressing tray. So there's a perforated edge at one end. So that's the edge that I'm going to, to tear off and it just opens quite nicely. So 
So when I start opening my tray, I always want to start by opening it away from me, and I'm going to be doing so gently because I don't want to dislodge the forceps that are actually uh, tucked underneath here. I'm also going to be cognizant of the one-inch border that's considered contaminated, so, um, so not to put my hands in the tray itself um, and causing contamination. So I've now grabbed the forceps that are considered sterile. The tips of these forceps are considered sterile. And what I like to do is I like to square out my field like so. And I can rearrange or organize my um, container so it's better for me. And then I'm going to place my... Um, Actually, before I do that, I'm going to remove some of the items. So I have a plastic garbage bag here. So I, I can use it or I can discard it. I have my drapes that I'm going to remove. And I have a couple of pairs of tweezers in here. And as mentioned before, I'm going to add a couple more items. So I'm still going to need to use these tweezers. and there's the tips are still sterile, so I'm going to make sure that I place the tips with it beyond that one inch border so that they may remain sterile for, for further use. So I'm going to add my two by two. So using the sterile tips, I'm going to withdraw the sterile two by two and place it in my tray. And now I'm going to add a 4x4. Four four. So the inner package of these is considered sterile. And my tips are sterile. I'm going to place it in there. And now I'm going to add my solution. And I've already checked the solution, and I know that it's been open within the 24 hours, so I'm able to use it. I'm going to unscrew it here. I want to make sure that the label is palm up. I'm going to discard some of that solution into my garbage. And I want to be sure that when I'm adding the solution, that I'm not splashing it all over, that I'm doing it in a controlled manner. So now my solution is added, all my supplies are added to the tray, and now I'm ready to do the sterile dressing change on my patient. Um, it's very important that when you're opening your tray, you only do it uh, right at the moment when you're actually ready to do the procedure. Otherwise, your field will become contaminated um, related to prolonged exposure to air. Okay, so now I'm ready to dress Mr. Fox's wound. And so I've set up my sterile field um, with all the supplies that I need. I've also placed um, my garbage uh, right here so that way I don't have to turn my back. Um, you can have a garbage on the bed or you can have it um, a garbage on the floor. It's whatever you prefer as long as you're not turning your back to your sterile field. And I've also elevated the bed so that it's a so that it's a comfortable working uh, level for myself. And I've made sure that my bedside table is in a position um, related to the patient where I don't need to turn my back um, in order to gather my supplies. So before I go on to clean the incision, I'm going to place this drape. And I find if I, if I grab the corners with my thumbs like so. Um, when I put it down on the patient, uh, my hands are not going to uh, touch the patient, so my hands still remain sterile. Um, and now I'm going to go ahead and clean the incision. So I'm going to use the two by twos 
that I've added my cleansing solution to and I'm just going to wring them out. And I'm going to start by going down the center of the incision. And as I go down the center, I can, um, I can roll my gauze to get any um, debris that might be there. Um, in terms of Mr. Alan Fox, his incision is quite clean. Um, but if it wasn't, that could be something that you might have to do a couple of times. Then I'm going to grab another 2x2 two two and wring that one off. And I'm going to proceed by cleaning each side. So I'm going to go down the furthest side, top to bottom, and then discard. And then the last one, I'll go down the side that's closest to me, top to bottom, and then discard. So now his wound has been clean, and I'm going to go ahead and add the, the um, four by fours, because that's what the order is for, to add some four by fours, and then an ABD pad. So I'm just going to set the four by fours down there. Looks great. That there. And now I'm going to take my abdominal pad and I'm going to place it over here. So now the wound is, is um, covered. I can get can move that down slightly because I don't need to keep my hand sterile. The last thing I'm going to do is add the tape. So that's all taped, and now I'm just going to remove my sterile gloves here. I'm going to pure all my hands, and I'm going to clean up my work area and um, get rid of some of these supplies.